Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I was originally a little bit concerned when I saw that I was uh, due to speak in the mid-afternoon. I thought maybe we might all be in that kind of that food coma type type phase. But after some of the excitement we've had this afternoon, I'm sure that I've got everybody's attention at, at this point. I think we kind of made it right through that uh, that phase. I'd like to start off and, and thank Tammy Lucero and the Uinta County Commissioner's Office and Commissioners uh, for this opportunity today and for organizing this event. I think it's been a wonderful opportunity to, to collaborate with, with everyone here. And I'd also like to, to thank uh, you all for the opportunity to, to tell Newfield's story today. Some of the things I'll be sharing with you today is, you know, what, what are we doing today in the basin? But, but more importantly, um, how are we going to continue growing in the manner that, uh, that we've been able to accomplish uh, into the future? A little bit about uh, who we are. Uh, for those that may not know, we are an independent oil and gas company headquartered in the Woodlands, Texas. Uh, we strive really to achieve uh, uh, our growth in our business model through a, a balanced portfolio of exploration, production, and tactical acquisitions. We are a publicly traded company uh, under the ticker symbol NFX on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, some of the fun facts about the company, we're about 3.7 TCFE in proven reserve base, about 70% of that's natural gas. That ratio has changed quite a bit over the years, as, you, as everyone, I think, uh, has spoken to today. You know, our mix on capital expenditure has changed quite a bit towards the oil side, which is good news for us here in the Uinta Basin, in our assets in the Uinta Basin. And I, what I would say is that number used to be, you know, when I started with the company, something like 85% natural gas, and we've obviously trended down uh, to where we sit today. And essentially today, um, similar to what uh, Eric shared, about 100% of Newfield's capital today is dedicated towards oil and liquid rich uh, plays. Uh, we've grown to about $10 billion in enterprise value and uh, throw off about uh, greater than $2.5 billion in, in annual revenues. You can see some of the locations that we operate. Uh, we have a, a sizable office uh, here. I think most are familiar with uh, our, our Roosevelt area office, um, about 400 employees in that office. And we do uh, uh, run our Rocky Mountain business unit out of Denver. Um, on an employee count, I, I like to tell kind of a story here. Uh, for those of us that have been around Newfield for a number of years, uh, when I started approximately 13 years ago as a, a development geologist uh, down in Houston, they used to hand out a, a phone list that, that had our uh, kind of a number off to the side, what, what your employee number was. Well, uh, most of us that have been around know what that number is, and I happen to be employee number 72. Uh, so today, standing at over 1,500 employees, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the, the growth that we've achieved as a, as a company. Um, we've been in business for a little over 22 years. Um, this, this diagram looked a whole lot different, as I mentioned, uh, really in our upbringing as a company. The first 10 years uh, in business, we were essentially entirely focused in the Gulf of Mexico. So this map would have been quite a, le uh, quite a bit less interesting in those days. It would essentially have looked like uh, that blue blob you see down at the bottom. Um, today, uh, you know, our portfolio of investments has obviously changed significantly as these uh, pie diagrams would depict. Um, uh, as far as the Rockies' importance to Newfield as a corporation, you can see that in terms of proven reserves, our Rockies' assets uh, contribute about 33 percent of our reserve base and about a quarter of our uh, overall uh, production today. And these, these numbers are growing uh, each and every day. Drilling down a little bit further now um, into what's near and dear to us all here in the Uinta Basin, um, you know, how significant is the Uinta Basin uh, to Newfield? Well, I can tell you that uh, this area has, has truly become uh, a crown jewel, so to speak, for Newfield. It, it truly is a legacy-style asset. Uh, I mentioned it last night at dinner, you know, ever since the acquisition's taken place, it's been one of those types of opportunities that gets better and better for us. You know, back in 2004, as, as some of the bullet points suggest here, as when we actually acquired the field seven years ago. It was kind of fun to be a part of that team for many reasons, but uh, one that I, I look back uh, on now is as I walked up and down the streets in Denver, I got a lot of funny stares. You know, what? first of all, who's new field and what are you guys doing uh, coming into the Rockies looking at shallow, black wax, water flood, 
Um, you know, gas was really uh, at that time driving most of most of the M and A activity in, in up and down uh, Denver. Uh, a lot of folks thought we were crazy. I think oil was in the the high 30s at that time. Well, we're we're obviously very uh, proud about what we've done, and and obviously things have worked out on the commodity side. But today we. We uh, operate uh, gross production of over 23,000 barrels of oil, predominantly black wax, and, and starting to trend a little bit uh, yellow as we move north. Uh, you can see the employee count that I referred to earlier. Some of these bullet points I'll expand upon a little further in coming slides, but where we are today, essentially we're looking at accelerating our, our production growth through increased rig count. Our drilling inf inventory has significantly increased. Um, a significant amount of our capital in the Rockies business unit is being dedicated to our assets in Utah. And, and uh, I'm proud to say that the Greater Monument Butte field area is today Newfield's single largest asset. Um, while we've worked very hard at developing uh, this asset, we've also worked hard at developing relationships uh, in the basin. And um, I'm, I'm excited to, to say today that in 2011, uh, we've been awarded the um, Earth Day Award for our cooperative efforts with landowners uh, in the basin. And I'd also like to, to mention, uh, it was referenced earlier today, we were fortunate enough to have uh, Governor Herbert out to the uh, field office earlier this spring. We conduct a, a field uh, cleanup day every spring um, where we get out and uh, clean up along Highway 40 as well as throughout uh, Monument Butte Field uh, proper. Um, but we were real excited to host him and, and have an opportunity to show him some of the things we're doing to uh, advance our growth initiatives into the future. And I'd invite all of you, uh, if you're interested in a good steak and uh, uh, coming out to help us clean up sometime next spring, to, to come and join us in the field. Uh, this next slide will show you a little bit of uh, you know, kind of how we find ourselves where we are today. Uh, Newfield prides itself, as I mentioned earlier, in balancing uh, uh, exploration, production, and, and acquisition. This shows uh, in, in kind of a cartoon depiction of how we've grown over the years. It, it all started with the Monument Butte field. You can see to the south here in, in uh, Boulder yellow um, back in 2004. And essentially over the, over the past seven years, we've bolted on uh, to our acreage position through a number of arrangements and uh, exploration development agreements with the uh, Ute Indian tribe. Um, we uh, have added significant acreage in, in that capacity, as well as most recently um, a significant acquisition that I think many people uh, are aware of earlier this, this summer, uh, what we're calling our central basin uh, position. You can see where we sit. Uh, you've seen a lot of maps today. You know, we sit basically between Natural Buttes and Altamont Bluebell in a, in a largely contiguous uh, acreage position that we've been able to basically triple over the last uh, seven years from about 88,000 net acres to now uh, a quarter of a million acres. I think everybody's kind of had a version of uh, some of these geologic slides. This is our cube. Uh, I think we need to get together as, as operators and come up with uh, <laughs> one standard cube, but I'll, I'll walk you through ours here in a, in a few minutes. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, about a quarter of a million acres, you can see the breakdown, just under 50% of that is federal acreage, um, about 20% of it is tribal lands, and uh, about 33% or so is state and fee lands. Uh, so a pretty good spread. Uh, it is a contiguous uh, position with a high working interest. We always value the, the higher working interest position uh, from a control and operatorship standpoint. We have a really deep drilling inventory today. Um, you know, I think we heard earlier, if, if we reference the cube here, we heard a, uh, from Brooke earlier at Anadarko the, the bowl of potato chips uh, analogy. Well, this is our version of the, the potato chips. Uh, you can see them in the Green River Formation there, which has really been our historical approach out here in drilling shallow Green River oil wells. We've done so vertically. Uh, we're doing so now uh, utilizing pad drilling in our infill program. But you can see some of the other opportunities that, that we're looking at in terms of horizontal and deeper wasatch potential uh, today. Uh, some of the cumes you see there on the field to, to kind of put Monument Butte in context, we've, we've cumed about 67 million barrels equivalent. Um, that's relative to Altamont Bluebell. We're not quite as big, obviously. But what I would say is um, uh, we have designs that um, resource potential. We believe we've got somewhere near uh, 700 million barrels of uh, potential out in front of us. On a, on a net equivalent basis. So I think another thing that was mentioned earlier is you know, our best days are ahead of us, and that's clearly what, uh, what we think about our assets today. 
Um, with 6,000 locations, this, again, to put it in context, this is nearly two decades of uh, drilling opportunities uh, at our current pace. We are the largest oil producer in Utah, 30% of the, the total Utah uh, daily production and about 42% of the basin's production, again, primarily black wax. And obviously this is all being done uh, today due to the fact that we're, we're generating high rates of return on our development. Um, to kind of talk a little bit more about what we're doing in terms of rate, um, uh, today we're, we're producing uh, on the order of 20,000 uh, barrels a day net equivalent, and, and you can see that we have designs of growing that uh, production rate out into the future. Um, I've referenced our growth relative to the acquisition in several ways, but uh, kind of like the idea of tripling, we, we, have, uh, we have tripled our production rate since uh, 2004, and we've invested over $1.7 billion, uh, out, and ex that excludes acquisition activity. Uh, so this is, this is purely drill and complete and uh, facilities and infrastructure uh, type spending. Uh, along the way, we've added nearly 30, uh, sorry, 300 jobs. Uh, and today employ over 400 people in our Utah office uh, outside of Roosevelt. We talk a little bit about multiplier effect. We've heard a little bit about that today uh, from an indirect basis. On a, every day we actually touch approximately 1,200 uh, not employees, but work uh, contractors and employees uh, combined uh, in our efforts uh, every day. Uh, and as I mentioned, obviously infrastructure expansion is, is a key, and, and I'm going to speak to that here in a, in a few minutes. In terms of economic impact, obviously all this growth has generated significant uh, derivatives um, to various entities and, and in this case I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we've done for the state. Um, we uh, uh, generate approximately $10 million uh, uh, in royalty and severance taxes every year and over a five-year period of time you can see about $50 million in ad valorem and production taxes. Um, as far as at the county level, um, the counties uh, Uinta and Duchesne, where our, all of our assets are uh, associated with Monument Butte Field area, uh, we uh, those counties derive greater than $5 million in annual tax revenues. And then again, our relationship with the tribe, uh, we've, we've, through those EDAs and agreements, we've generated uh, over $5 million in taxes, fees, and bonuses, and, uh, and approximately $20 million in royalties. So making a significant Im uh, economic impact in the basin. And this is one of those graphs that you like to look at or we like to describe as up and to the right. Um, you know, the graph shows an employee count of around 150 in our field office in 2004. And as I mentioned, uh, in 2011, we're north of 400 employees today. And uh, along with that, our payroll has gone from, uh, you know, somewhere in the $8 million range in our field uh, to north of $25 million today. So uh, obviously a significant element of growth. So while we're very proud of, of uh, all the production growth and uh, uh, economic impact that we've made, we also recognize the importance uh, of environmental stewardship. And, and I can tell you that Newfield is committed to responsible development. And I want to share with you some of the things we're doing um, to ensure that while we grow our production, uh, again on this graph, uh, we like to see up and to the right on production, but as we grow production, we, we actually uh, reduce our carbon footprint, which has been the message so many times uh, said today. This, is, this graph actually shows um, how we plan to uh, obviously continue growing production while reducing our ozone constituents. Uh, we are also a, a, a supporter of this wintertime ozone study, uh, and this is one of the things that we're looking uh, to accomplish within our field. And how are we going to do that? Uh, well, it's through a couple of uh, uh, means that we, we like to call our industrial revolution out in the field. Uh, we're, we're retrofitting old facilities with new uh, 24, 21st century technology. We're going to be installing um, giant gas uh, oil separation facilities that are going to reduce significantly our VOCs and NOx emissions and reduce uh, our truck traffic, as, as everyone is, a lot of folks have referenced today. And how do we do that? Well, it's essentially consolidating the production of uh, 200 plus wells and, central, and, and current central tank batteries uh, and bringing that production to common processing facilities um, that's going to enable us to accomplish those, uh, those statistics. In terms of uh, reduced surface impact, we've heard a lot about directional drilling. Well, that's certainly one of our, uh, our plans going forward as well. We are utilizing existing pads for our infill drilling program. 
Within Greater Monument Butte Unit, we're actually developing on 20 acre spacing. Um, uh, amazingly enough, uh, we're not seeing a, a significant interference at that level and we're still driving tremendous economic returns on those opportunities. We estimate that uh, somewhere around three quarters of our, or of our green, ri green River drilling program going forward will, will utilize existing pads, um, which is obviously a pretty significant number in terms of reduced surface impact. On the water conservation side, as I referenced earlier, we are water flooding our, our Greater Monument Butte field. What I can tell you today is we produce about 25,000 uh, barrels of water per day. Well, we, we treat and clean that water, as, as Governor Herbert uh, uh, referenced earlier, and actually re-inject every barrel back into the ground uh, in our water flood operation. Uh, we actually inject, uh, believe it or not, somewhere around the neighborhood of 46,000 barrels of water uh, in the ground per day. In terms of uh, our EIS, uh, we are working on a comprehensive EIS uh, today. Um, I'll give you kind of a status update of where we are. Uh, our notice of intent uh, is published in, in the Federal Register and we have completed a series of BLM scoping meetings. Um, currently the BLM is in alternate, alternative uh, development phase for approximately the last nine months. Um, some, of the, some of the phase delays uh, associated um, with this alternative development phase um, surround air quality issues uh, as well as hookless, hookless cactus as we've been speaking uh, kind of throughout the day. But we're real hopeful that uh, working together on some of the initiatives we have in our industrial revolution is going to help us uh, push through some of these issues and, and uh, have a high confidence level that we'll be able to do that. So kind of in summary here, um, 2011 and beyond, uh, as I mentioned, we've got a quarter million acres Clearly, we've demonstrated that this is a, a multi-year growth type asset um, to, to not only Newfield, but, but to the Uinta Basin. Historically, I didn't mention this earlier, but we've run uh, uh, typically a five rig program historically. Well, we, we have uh, every intent of increasing this rig fleet uh, going forward. We see uh, just from our capital resources and, and manpower resources that we would have the ability to, to increase our fleet to, to more than nine rigs going forward. And, and continue growing production. I think so many, uh, everyone would recognize that with the type of decline rates and things that we see and in th through the Rockies, if you're not able to increase your, your rig rates, it's, it's really difficult to, to sustain growth for long periods of time. We've been able to do it um, to this point, uh, but we're, we're really interested in continuing that growth going forward, which obviously uh, has substantial regional economic uh, impact and job growth as, as we've demonstrated today. Um, but this type of growth obviously uh, requires the collaboration that we've been speaking to throughout uh, last night and today uh, to really uh, work towards removing some of the constraints that we have on our, on our development. We've, we've already kind of beat up the EPA a little bit today and some of the regulatory initiatives that are out in front of us. Um, we talked about the need for additional permits and working through these EIS processes. I'd like to share a few things, you know, um, just from a personal perspective. I, I'm very encouraged by what we're doing um, in, in these collaborative efforts. Um, I'd like to kind of give a shout out to, to Bill Stringer and, and Mike Stewig and their staff uh, over at the BLM as well as uh, the state uh, regulatory uh, agencies. We've, we've uh, uh, to, obviously to drill the, t the type of well count that we've enjoyed over the last few years, we've had a great relationship with those offices and those agencies and, and uh, I'd like to, like I said, give them a shout out that uh, um, they've really uh, worked well with us this year. We're, we're challenging uh, every day. How can we, how can we drive uh, additional permits? What can we do on our side to improve things? Um, and and I'm really, I've been really pleased with the response that we've had in, in our meetings. And it it's certainly has come with a great deal of work and uh, relationship building. But, uh, but I'm excited about where we are today. There's obviously a lot of work ahead of us all uh, into the future. Um, but uh, I appreciate your attention today and uh, look forward to uh, more events like this in the future. Thank you.